Yes. Well, we're not even a week into this new year and it's already starting to look a lot like 2022. The war in Ukraine grinds on, a new COVID variant sweeping across the U.S. while dictatorship, populism and illiberal democracies seem to be gnawing at the very bones of our democracies. So what lies ahead for our world in 2023? Every year, the Eurasia Group sticks its neck out and tries to predict the biggest risks we'll face in the coming 12 months. Here are only a few of the problems they see bubbling under. Russian President Vladimir Putin is the villain of the peace for many since his botched invasion of Ukraine. So what will happen if his country becomes the world's most powerful rogue state? Too weak to win, too strong to ignore. China is maxing out on Xi Jinping as the Chinese leader reshapes the country from the top down. But how communist, how nationalist and how stable is the world's supplier of just about everything? For decades, the United States saw itself as the proud exporter of liberty and stability around the world. Now its algorithms, anti-social media and artificial intelligence are turning into prime global disruptors made in the US of A. But it's not just politicians and countries. Water is at low ebb, whether for drinking, watering crops, generating power, or transporting goods. For more and more people, water is down to the last drop. And the man behind this outlook joins me now. Ian Bremer is a political scientist and president of the Eurasia Group. He joins us tonight from New York City. Mr. Bremer, welcome to the day. You say this year's risks are the most dangerous you've encountered in the 25 years you've been publishing these analyses. How bad is it? It's the most dangerous because it's driven by actors that are the least constrained um, and have some of the worst information. So we, you talked about several of them in the opening, and I, I, I liked the way you, you put it quite a bit. I mean, Putin, Vladimir Putin, made the biggest misjudgment of any major leader on the global stage in decades when he invaded Ukraine. And he did that in part because he's consolidated so much power in Russia in his own hands. He's surrounded by yes men. He gets bad information and there are no checks and balances on what he does. And as a consequence, the world is much more dangerous because he's made this tremendous mistake. Well, the fact is that there are a number of aging dictators and tech bros around the world where you can say the same thing applies to them. They're really powerful. They're surrounded by yes men. They don't have checks and balances. That's where Xi Jinping is. It's where the Iranian supreme leader is. And it's also where the people that are driving a lot of these dangerous algorithms that are undermining democracy. And those are the single biggest issues that really concern me in terms of the impact of the geopolitical environment this year. Hmm. But you, as many analysts around the world, are most concerned about Russia. He's the number one on your list of risks for 2023. Now, as Putin stands with his back against the wall, you know, he's in a war he can't win but won't quit. How concerned do you think we should be about a major escalation of the conflict this year? I think that we have to be very concerned. And if we as Germany, it's even higher than in the United States. And the reason for that is because we're not in a cold war with Russia. We're in a hot war with Russia. Now, it's a proxy war, and NATO is not fighting it directly. We're fighting it through Ukraine. But, you know, you see the more advanced military equipment that's being provided to Ukraine literally every day this week. Ukraine can defend itself, um, and Russia cannot win this war on the ground. They can't win this war in the air. And, and yet Russia's position globally is deteriorating every day. Its economy is contracting. NATO is becoming stronger and expanding. Expanding. Ukraine itself is going to be one of the most powerful military forces in all of NATO. Um, and, and diplomatically, the Russians are becoming isolated. So the fact that Putin sees this as a war that he is losing against NATO on the ground in Ukraine means that this is increasingly going to affect NATO states directly. In what shape, in what form? You talk about asymmetric warfare, cyber attacks. Can you elaborate a bit on what we should be bracing for? Sure. Well, if you think about who has been the most dangerous rogue state in the world before Russia, it was Iran. And on the one hand, Iran drove the Abraham Accords and brought these countries in the region closer together. But it's because of the threats that the Iranians were making. It was espionage. It's drone strikes. 
ballistic missile strikes, it's terrorism, it's proxy war, all of that against countries in the region. So if Russia's becoming a rogue state, that's what we're talking about. It's cyber attacks, fiber attacks, pipeline attacks, it's espionage, it's disinformation, all of these things that aren't just the focusing on Ukraine, but increasingly are focusing on NATO states. Frontline NATO states like Poland will be most vulnerable, but more broadly. In 2023, I don't, th unfortunately, I don't think we will be able to still only talk about this as a Russian war against and in Ukraine. I think it's broader than that. I want to move on to the other items you mentioned on your list. You write in the report that this year will be a tipping point for the role of disruptive technology in society. What should we be preparing for there? The thing that surprised me the most, we call this weapons of mass disruption. And it's the first time in 25 years that, that I haven't written uh, one of the one of the pieces of the report that title was written by chat GPT and an AI bot when we we fed in what the risk was about and it fi in five seconds came up with the title uh, this is the year when the Turing test will be broken when human beings are not able to differentiate online between what's a bot and what's a human um, and that's not just a distraction um, in the hands of rogue states and bad actors that will drive political polarization and violence, it will drive conspiracy theories, it will deeply undermine democracies, especially weaker democracies around the world. So the reality of generative artificial intelligence has gone from an interesting you know, potential uh, productivity boon to suddenly also one of the world's most dangerous geopolitical risks. And using that, for example, um, to disrupt uh, stock markets, to undermine corporate players, uh, like you saw, I mean, imagine a meme stock like GameStop that is, instead of being driven by a few people on a Reddit board, instead are being driven by massive numbers of bots that are actually faking human beings. It's mm -hmm. a much more immediate and explosively dangerous impact on the marketplace. Plenty of risks ahead. We'll bring you on again to talk about this year's greatest opportunities at some point. Ian Bremmer, author of Top Risks of fun. 2023. Thank you so much for your time. Always good to see you.